We're going to go really quickly through what we've already covered in chapter seven in order to close it out. Everybody, we've seen this, this diamonds data set, we're familiar with that. We started out looking at um, at how to present a categorical variable of cut when the only thing that we wanted to present was the number of observations. And so this is one categorical variable and then the y-axis being, being uh, number of observations. And then we also looked at one continuous variable, which was caret, and we had to use bin width to break, the, to, to break that continuous variable into bins and make it act like a categorical variable. We used filtering so that we could look at just what we wanted to in the data set. We looked at zooming in using xlim and ylim, zooming into the, into the graph. We also um, looked at changing the bin width on the histograms and saw how more of those, uh, the bars popped up and they were skinnier. And then we also looked at frequency poly here uh, to be able to show, um, show this was, this ended up being, you know, one continuous variable but it was also categorized by color using a, a categorical variable there. Okay. And this this uh, frequency polling being an improvement over the, the graph, the, uh, the histogram there. We looked at the ggplot cheat sheet. We also talked about, <clears throat> about stat as a way to present other kinds of counting rather than counting the number of observations. You can use stat to count, uh, in this case, the, um, the, the, the sum of the carrots in that, in that um, data set. Then we did some exercises together where we walked through trying to figure out how to tell which was the X, which was the Y, and which was the Z variable um, compared to length, width, and depth. And um, there were some, uh, you know, Colin put his responses into the Slack. And then those, I, what I have here is the one that I went over, being able to compare um, X and Y, and then X and Z. And obviously there's multiple answers, and multiple ways to go about doing this one. And then we looked at box plots where we were able to look at the distribution of the price variable I've broken out by this, this categorical variable of cut. And then we looked at reordering those as well. Okay. All right, so that catches us up for what we've covered over the last few weeks. And so naturally it is time for a quiz. All right, so here's the quiz. Quiz question number one anyway, I think there's four or five of these. All right, so if we want to count the number of records for each value in a categorical variable, which one of these is the right way to do it? Okay. They all start with ggplot diamonds, then you have geom cut, geom histogram, and geom bar. Anybody want to, you can unmute or put it in the chat or American Sign Language, however. <laughs> Bruno says C, exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. <clears throat> Okay. Yep. So this is this is the very first one that we looked at. Okay. A bar a bar chart. All right. Next question. We now we want to show a bar chart with the values of a categorical variable, but instead of counting the number of records for each value, add up the values in a continuous variable. Okay. So we've got geom cut. We have geom histogram with an additional add-on here of geom histogram by caret. And then we've also got geom bar with an X and a Y variable and stat identity. Anybody want to take a guess on this one? Yeah, so it's going to be a bar chart and we want to see each of the values of a categorical variable like cut, but instead of counting up the number of records, we want to add up the values from a continuous variable like caret. It's like a line. Well, it's still going to be a bar chart. It's still going to look like bars. Okay. But instead of instead of counting up the number of observations, the y-axis is going to be um, the values of a continuous variable, like adding up the values of a continuous variable. It's going to be the mm -hmm. e, isn't it? Sorry. 
It's gonna be B, isn't it? Maybe B. Ah, oh, let's see. Yeah. So, so the the key here and um, is is the idea that if you're trying to, if the y-axis is going to be something, if you want it to be a bar chart or a histogram, you want it to be something other than the number of observations, then you'll want to look at using the stat. Okay. The so bar charts settle in really quickly for just number of observations and uh, and histograms as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe play around with that a little bit. All right. Also, uh, I make no apologies for the way that these questions are written. This was like stream of consciousness. So if you're not accurately reading my mind, that's totally on you. It has nothing to do with the type of it. <laughs> All right. So count the number of records for each group in a continuous variable. So here we're focusing more on histogram. And this question more has to do with, with how you arrange this part over here. Seems a Okay. Yeah, I want to redeem myself and say it's A. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly right. So, so uh, it's, a, it's a histogram, sure. Um, but this time it's a categorical, sorry, it's a continuous variable down here. And we have to have the bin width that we specify. And the bin width comes outside of AES. So it comes outside of the aesthetic. Right? That's why this one is incorrect. Mm -hmm because we're not mapping the bin width to anything. We're not, we're not trying to determine the bin width from some other variable in the data. We're just stating that the bin width is 0 0.5 or 0 0.1. Okay. All right. Um, then the next one, count the number of records for each group in a continuous variable but add color based on the categorical variable, okay? So this one looks at histogram as well. The trick here is knowing what the different aesthetics mean. In particular, whether it would be fill versus color. I'm going to take a shot and say A. That is what you would guess, but it's actually fill. So, and and uh, I was running into this today because I was typing color, 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 and why wasn't it working? And the reason is because color has to do with the boundary line, the border, and fill does the actual color that's inside. That's how it is for histograms. For other types of geomes, then you would use color to fill in the, the shape. So why it's like that, I don't know. Write a letter, see if you can get that changed. So, all right, last one. Okay, count the number of records for each group in a continuous variable make it a line chart with each line a different color based on a categorical variable. So when we talk about making a, making a histogram or, or counting the number of records for each group in a continuous variable, that's a clue for a histogram, but we wanna make it into a line chart so that changes over to a frequency poly. Yeah. Okay. A. Yeah, I also think that's A. Yes, indeed. All right. Good. So this time you would use color because it's it's the line, it's a border, I think. Okay. Cool.
All right. Cool. I think I said I think I said that was the last one, but I lied. Um, show this one says this one really is the last one. Maybe this one says uh, show the distribution of a continuous variable broken down by a categorical variable. So uh, would you say a frequency poly, a bar chart, or a box plot? I'm going to go on record and say C. Yes, indeed, box plots, right? So it's the distribution of a continuous variable. So that's why we have this up here. This is the distribution, but it's broken down by a categorical variable. All right, so I'm, ensure, I'm sure that your internal dialogue goes much differently as you're thinking through what it is that I actually want to present. Um, but hopefully, it at least gives you some thought about, you know, as I'm thinking through what I have and what I want to present, what's the best way to do that? And, and it gives you a little more fluency in terms of talking about categorical variables, distributions, continuous variables, um, those kinds of things. All right. So that really was the last quiz question. Great job. Everybody gets a million points. So very good. All right. So then that, that wraps us up. Um, and then at the very end of last week, we talked also about a couple of other questions, uh, exercise questions that came through in the, in the book here. So we had, we had this, uh, this extract from the book itself where the authors gave um, this code here. And what we we're going to do is just have somebody walk through what each of these different lines mean and what effect they have on the on the outcome. And this is and so uh, Sandra, you're going to be able to do that one. You good? You're on mute, though. I just need to share my screen. Actually, give it give me just a second because I was okay, I'll, sure. Yeah, let me come back to you on it. Um, I was just going to go to this one. And then the next um, exercise that we had <clears throat> comes from this part of the book where it says, use what you've learned to improve the visualization of the departure times of canceled versus non-canceled flights. That was an improvement over this visual. And there were a couple of solutions that we presented here um, that, are, that are, are you can find online or also your own solution. And Bruno, you were going to tackle this one? Good, all right. So before we jump into that, I just wanted to look over the flight, the flights data set real quick so everybody can be a little bit familiar with it. It's de there's departure times. It's all the flights out of the New York area in 2013. And there's um, there's the year, month, and day of the departure, then the, the actual times of the departure, when the, the flights were actually scheduled, uh, what kind of delays they, they encountered, carrier, flight, tail number, origin and destination airports, um, then the flight time, distance, and then um, is some other some other timing uh, elements here. And then it looks like this for less, as you can see. All right, so very good. Uh, let's turn it over to Sandra then. Let's see, let's, let's let you walk sure. through your, sure. so I just stopped sharing. And okay, okay. I should allow you to share yours. Shares my screen. Uh, okay, uh, it is a white screen. Yes. Uh, um, how do I see what I'm sharing? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, just that I don't see the screen. Um, I don't see what I'm sharing. I see you, but I don't see the screen. Is this normal? No, you should be able to see your screen as well. Uh, maybe if you can, maybe if you move the, the zoom window out of the uh, way, maybe uh, you might need to minimize the zoom window and then you can move it out of the way. Uh, let me, see. Oh, it's, o it's okay. I as see. long as you see my screen is okay. 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 Uh, okay. So to... basically this, uh, this step, okay. Uh, this step we have done. So just to check out uh, the um, data frame and in case you didn't know, uh, this when you have the double do two point is when you are calling something from a package. And sometimes it could be useful if you are using, um, uh, if sometimes you could have a function, they have the same, but they are coming from different package and you want to be, to, to be sure which one is which one. Uh, okay. 
So this one we have seen. Now what I have done, I have, um, uh, what, okay, what I have done, okay, to, 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 to go. Is it not one, okay, just took this one. We have done this one. Now about the easy, this one, yes and nay, it's a it return a Boolean. Uh, so it means that actually you are just going to see, let me turn this one, uh, why does it work? Uh, uh, why does it work? Uh, shit. Uh, okay, shit. Okay, so basically this one, it just that what I wanted to, uh, uh, to see is that when you are, um, uh, this one is just a boolean, uh, just a boolean. So it means that this one will mean that when this one is just NA and you could have is integer, is anything, it's just a way to get a, a boolean on the variable. Uh, so you can see the example when it's a boolean, false, false, false. Okay, I'm not good at it. And what could be interesting is that if we want to know exactly how many NA variable we have, we can, we know for, there is, ah, oh, okay, sorry. It's just because I I did it before and it seems that I didn't run all my code. Ah. Okay. Uh, so for the Boolean, we have seen, then after we have the operation and uh, there is two kind of operation. We have this one is a reminder from the division and this one is the integer division. So basically we have an example, exactly what it is. We can see that we have the time because the time is putting uh, this way uh, in um, hour minute. So basically the first step is just to get the hour and the other one is just that we want to have a, a unit, a decimal unit. So we need to decimal uh, unit. Uh, it's just a way to, uh, to say that uh, 45 minutes is, is dot 75. Uh, Okay, then after, now this part is done. So now we know cancel is a Boolean, it's either false or true. This one will give you the, the unit of the minute. This one will be, this one are the minute. So this one is just the addition. So at least is what we have. It's just a way so we can plot in the decimal system. Now here, what we have, so we are going to get a data frame with true or false and the time. And it's what we are going to plot. When we are plotting this one, what we can see is that basically because we have um, this mapping color is cancel. So we have the false in red and the blue in tr uh, the blue true. And this one, it's um, is not this one is histogram is what we have just seen. Uh, this one is um, visual visualize the distribution of single continuous. Okay, and if you want to really understand what he's doing, what I have done is I have plot on the same, the histogram and the frag poly. So we can see exactly what is happening and it's, and I use fill, so not color. So it's white, so we can see exactly what is happening. And we can see that how this one, because it's not, a, we are plotting a count, we are not plotting the data. Uh, so it's, it's a, it's a tricky one, this one, because at the beginning, I didn't understand what we were plotting. And I had to do that to, um, to have a better understanding that actually it's counting the number here, but it's not like a jump plum, jump point. It's completely different. Mm -hmm. So it's all, of, I don't know if you have any question. Any questions? Well explained. Yeah, it's good. I think it's interesting the the approach of dividing the the time, um, the, using the the division to divide out the number of hours to change a number like five hundred and thirteen to five hours and then a decimal por portion of an hour. I thought that was an interesting approach. Yeah, it worked. Yeah. You know, you know. Actually, the reason why I wanted to. Uh, uh, I rerun step uh, line by line just to really understand what the code was really doing. So say 15 minutes was 25, you know, so we can see exactly what is happening. Yeah. So I had a question about this. 
because I was going through it. Is an inch is an integer is an integer a continuous variable? That's what I was that's what I was kind of thinking because I was wondering if you know because I was thinking why would we have to do this to convert this time into like a decimal time? And I was thinking that it was because is, is an integer isn't necessarily, and I could be wrong, I'm just thinking, an integer technically isn't a continuous number, but uh, we have to convert it into continuous so we can actually plot it. No, you know, my understanding was it was exactly like when we plot it in other way. It's when we are plotting time, we need to have a, a kind of unit and to know exactly what means the unit. We, we need to know what means one. And one hour is one unit. So after we need to find a way to put the minute inside the, the unit. For me, it wasn't, it's not a coding question. It's more likely that it's what you do when you do any plot, when you plot any physics plot, because my, my daughters they are doing now physics 20 and physics 30. So I know everything about plotting stuff. So it's what you have to do. Yeah. yeah. That's a good question. Um, I, yeah, whether it would be discrete or continuous or, uh, or or whatever. So, okay, good. Thank you, Sandra. Awesome. Uh, well, who can I? And okay, stop sharing. Okay, I find the button. Okay. All right, Bruno. What have you got? Okay, nothing special, but let me share. Oh, we'll see. We'll see about that. Yeah. Are we able to see? Nice. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Okay. Let me run this one here. The purpose is to improve this graph, right? So Sandra explained it perfectly. I before First, I started both solutions uh, from Brian. Um, I tried to, to do my my own, but not nothing special to happen. So I go to the solutions to see. Basically, they they went to the solutions of the book, for example, showing box proc and density. Right? Brian approached the density solution. Let me. Uh, they basically plot the the scalar department time uh, that we can see how the, the progress of the department time the scalar it's you can see the division from the when we have the false on the true uh, if it's delayed or not right it's mm -hmm. cancelled or not sorry um, Sometimes I have difficult to interpret this kind of graph, okay? but uh, what came in my mind, it's as much as we have a scalar department time delayed, right? The chance to be cancelled some more. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, if we do not have a lot of uh, delay, we, the chance to have the on time, it's, it's, it's bigger. Yeah. I thought this was an interesting solution because uh, on the, before you before you do this and just the raw solution, the cancel or the, the non canceled flights were so big that you could barely see the line for the canceled flights. The red was so big you could barely see the blue. Um, mm -hmm. But then by using this geome density, it converts it all to to a percentage, basically zero to one. And so uh, now you can see what the, the percentage is. So it, it yeah. evens that out. I thought that was a, a pretty cool solution. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Jeffrey approach a box plot uh, solutions that we can also see the distribution by the, the flag that was considered or not. Have, he also was able to see an, an outlier on this true. But in my opinion, it's not so easy to, to, to see comparing with the density. Density give me a better picture of the, the flights, right? Right. Yeah. 
And I was I was thinking about uh, how about the the companies? Which company have more department time? So I searched in the internet some kind of solutions for that, and I I saw one similar uh, approach, but not exactly the same. So I could adapt here. Let me increase my thing here. Uh, basically, I did a, a group by by the the company, right? so. And as summarize the the NAs that Sandra explained to us for to count the sum and the median, and also get one more average delay by this this variable, and plot a simple column to see the component that most have the the delay. Right, let me increase it. Uh, right, that that was <laughs> interesting too. Because I could see, for example, the companies that have more uh, delay and, and flights canceled in, in that time. So I don't, I'm not familiar with the names here in Brazil, but <laughs> but it's uh, gave me a, a more deep vision of the. Yeah, that's really cool. What are, what um, what airlines are those two large? Like, oh, 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 and let me check here. Uh, no. I'm not sure if, we have, if I what, have it here. Did it tell you what the what the abbreviation was? Yeah, it's O O and let me see. O O and Y B. Right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I. I That's okay. I was just. I'm not, yeah, I, I can try to search. No, there are a link here, but I'm not sure. I was just gonna. I was gonna give the spokesperson from each of those companies a chance to respond to this analysis. Maybe they have a good. Yeah. Idea. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I do not know which one. <laughs> <What's> Excellent. <interesting? laughs> That's cool. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for going through it. I hope that that it gave you some uh, some additional experience to work with with preparing it for um, for anybody else that happens to be watching this video later. Those would be good exercises for them to follow along with too. So, so thank you guys. All right, we will move on then, and we'll we'll close out the the last part of chapter seven. Okay. And there's just a couple of more geomes that, that are covered in the book here. So, uh, so I, I put this up here um, because the, the last part here starts to talk about comparing two categorical variables. So a, a variable like cut and color um, and a scatter plot can, can be a good place to start when you're comparing two categorical variables. Um, but if you don't have a quantity to include, then it's kind of meaningless. Right now, this is just cut and color. And if there's a dot there, it means that there are values found. So we do have a fair cut with D color, E, F, G, and so on. So, so the, there, there's not, anyway, it's not super helpful until we add in some kind of quantity in there. And if we wanted to include just the count of observations, just the number of observations, then you can, you can substitute the geome point for a different geome called geome count. And geome count will let you compare two categorical variables, cut and color, based on the counts. And so you can see how the different dots are sized based off of the numbers um, of of cut and color, okay? Pretty straightforward. Another approach to that is to calculate those counts using dplyr. Okay? So when we looked at geome count just a second ago, that's great when you're only comparing counts of the two categorical variables. Um, but if you wanted to do the same thing in dplyr, that can give you some greater flexibility. You can use group by and summarize and then, um, and then stick with the geom point. So these two um, lines of code will generate the same output. 
Um, but one of them is very straightforward. If you just need counts, the other one gives you a lot of a lot more flexibility, which we'll see more of in just a second. Okay. Cool. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. So then, um, so the the dplyr approach lets you substitute another aggregation method instead of count. So here we can still use a scatter plot geom point, but display the average carrot size. So we're not doing count now, but we're doing the average carrot size within each of these combinations. And you do that by still grouping by the cut and the color. And then you summarize at a new, a new column called carrot mean, which is determined by the, the average carrot size within each of these as these groups combine. And then under the geom point, you can still add cut and color on the X and Y axis and then the size of the, of the geomes is gonna be based off of this new column carrot mean, right? So that's why it, it displays this way. So what you may end up seeing is that ideal diamonds of D color have, a, it's a very low average carrot mean, but fair diamonds of the J color are, have a much higher average mean, okay? The only way uh, I may be wrong, but I think the only way you can get to this level of, of visualization is through the dplyr verbs. There, there wouldn't be another way to do it um, just through like uh, through ggplot itself or diamonds pipe ggplot. So if I'm wrong, correct me. All right. <clears throat> So you can also map the quantitative variable to a color instead of a size, right? So this is what we were just looking at um, just now. Um, right, uh, sorry, this is the, the one we looked at at the very beginning where it just uh, looked at the, the, the counts. But if we wanna add in a color variation here based off of the carrot size, then you do the same thing we did just a second ago, group by, summarize, carrot, and we're adding up the way, you know, carrot sum, that's the new column based off of the sum of the carrots. And then you add in that and the, the color is the carrot sum. Okay. Now why this one is, why geom point uses color to fill in instead of fill? I don't know, it's just how it is. Okay, but you can see that using the dplyr way of, of approaching this can give you a little more flexibility. Right? But if you find yourself making a scatter plot where the values are, uh, or are the, the fill colors are changing based off of a categorical variable, there's actually a better way to present that. There's a completely new geom. The geom tile is a better way of presenting a scatter plot where the, where the color um, indicates the quantity of the categorical variables. Okay, so you can use geom tile. And here again, you can do count ggplot geom tile, and then fill in with the, the n, the number, and it'll display like this. Okay, so you can give that a try if you haven't worked on, ge on geom tile yet. Let's take a look at that. Okay. So here n refers to what? to the count so that of n both. right yeah the the count it's the count of these two together so okay. so it generates that automatically but it's it's these numbers so when you do diamonds pipe count of cut and color mm -hmm. then you end up with a data set that has cut all the combinations of cut and color, right? Mm -hmm. And then it does a, a new column called N where it counts those as they combine. Mm -hmm. And so then you can move that right into geom tile and the fill is the N, which is that new column that was just created. Okay. All right. Um, and then you can do the same thing with dplyr. But again, it, it adds a little bit more flexibility beyond just the count. So you can also do carrot mean or you know whatever the case may be, fill based off of that carrot mean. 
and then you, you'll have that uh, that visualization there. Okay. So, so this this was the scatter plot version where we looked at the size based off of the carat mean. And this is the geome tile version where the fill is based off of the carat mean. But you can you should be able to see some analogs here where there's a really light color here and a very large dot here. And then um, you know a very small dot down here and a very dark color here. Okay. This column of, of carat mean tends to be on the smaller side this column of, of carrot mean tends to be on the darker side. Okay. So it's just a, two different ways of presenting the same information. All right. Okay. And then the last two um, here to look at are just some additional geomes that we that are introduced in the chapter. Um, bin 2D and geome hex. Um, so anyway, you, you you get the idea of how these are. So these are uh, these are these are category or these are continuous variables, carrot and price. Um, but instead of just putting a single dot for every observation, it bins the number of dots, okay? which is to say that there's fewer dots. There would be fewer dots down here. There's fewer observations here. There's more observations up here. Uh, I, got it, I got it the wrong way around, flipped around. There are a lot of observations down here because the color is light. And then there's fewer observations out here because the color is dark. Okay. But instead of every single observation being represented, there's, um, it's presented as, as a colors. Okay. Then the same thing over here is just presented by hex. Okay. All right, any questions? Good. Okay. All right. Give me, give me one second. I will be right back um, in just a second. Okay. Sorry, my daughter was playing the piano and I squashed her hopes and dreams of, of being a concert piano player. All right, then that should be it. Um, any other questions on anything we've covered so far? If not, then this closes out chapter seven. Anybody wanna look at any other examples or talk about anything that they've you've come across? That chapter was so cool. <laughs> it was cool? Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Good. Well, we spent enough time on it, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, that was great. Good. Okay. Anybody else? You feel like you're you you can work your way around some visualizations now? Did you get some? Did you learn something new? Any questions that you have? So thinking about um, Bruno's example, which I thought was 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 great. Um, one, one thing that you may think about using is facet wraps. So you had that question of which carriers, you know, which carriers had the most, um, uh, you know, or what was the visualization of the departure time based on cancel and non cancel flights by carrier? Look into facet wraps, because what it will do is it will, a facet wrap will create a visualization based on a categorical variable in it. And so um, you know, that would kind of help kind of answer that question. I think you did a really good job with the bar chart and everything. And then I think it's another way to look at it would be try to do a little facet wraps. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Have you used those before, Bruno? No. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had that for sure. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, good. Well, then we will we will wrap it up then for what we have tonight. Um, 